On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're hearing the results of a professionally recorded multi-track. Well, am I ever excited about today's session? This is a follow-up to last week's multi-track recording, where I took you through a step-by-step -step process of exactly how I like to prepare and record my multi-tracks. Well, in that session, I was encouraging you to take time and consideration and to engineer each one of the parts that you're overdubbing in creating that multi-track and to absolutely stay away from that commit function. You know, inside of Pro Tools, I have a function called commit, which allows me to select all of my virtual instrument tracks and with one click, create audio files. Well, I'll say it again, that is not the way that you create a multi-track, okay? That commit function is perfectly awesome for a temporary set of files for something that's placeholder. But when it comes to recording and preparing a professional multi-track, oh yeah, you wanna take the time and consideration to engineer each one of those tracks. So last week's session was really all about the how. This week's session is why. I've gone ahead and imported both of those multi-tracks into one session. I put them on a couple of VCAs and we're gonna take a few minutes today and listen and actually hear the difference between these two multi-tracks. And I promise you, there's no trickery going on here. This is as transparent as it gets. I'm playing each one of these multi-tracks back through the very same master bus with the same EQ, compression, and limiting on it. So there's nothing going on that's providing any kind of trickery. We're just listening to raw files. In one case, we're listening to the committed tracks that Pro Tools created for us. And in the other case, we're listening to the multi-track that I recorded and engineered in real time last week. So this is way too much fun. Let's dive into this thing. The first playback, we'll play back the full mix and I'll switch back between these two masters every couple of bars so we can hear the difference. Check it. Oh man, the difference between those two masters from where I'm sitting, night and day. When I play back that automatically created multi-track that Pro Tools did for us through that commit function, it absolutely sounds like I've got a blanket thrown on top of the console. As soon as we switch to the engineered multi-track that we did last week, the whole mix just opens up. It isn't just like a EQ change or something. It's like the master that we created by hand and engineered last week has more life to it. It's like when I switch back to that automatically created master that Pro Tools did for us, it just sort of falls down a bit. The whole track, the energy level just sort of drops. Like I said last week, you know, the true benefit of engineering and considering each one of your overdub sounds the way we did last week doesn't really show until you add them all together. Just like today when we put a whole multi-track together and we play it back, and we switch back and forth between these two. Yeah, these results are loud and clear. When we take the time to properly and professionally record a multi-track, it just makes all the difference in how that track comes across to that mix engineer. When I throw these faders up, there's no question that the energy that's coming out of this custom multi-track that we created last week is steps above what Pro Tools created through that commit function. Let's go ahead and solo up some of these individual sounds and hear the subtle differences between these tracks.
subtle difference in this section between these two masters, but no question, the one that we engineered is a little more defined, a little bit more clear, a little bit less muddy. <laughs> This animator track is a great example where we're not just talking about an EQ change or a flavor change. There's an actual feel change to this part. The way that I've applied the compression and the EQ to that animator sound absolutely creates more movement. When I switch back to the original non-engineered version, it sort of just lacks a bunch of movement. Check out what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's just no question to me, the version that we engineered is more animated. During this next section, there's a whole bunch of low-end frequencies that are all kind of mixing together. Notice how much more clear everything sounds in the engineered version that we actually tracked. When I switch back and forth between these two mixes, there's no question one of them is way easier to distinguish everything that's going on. You know, when you start mixing all of those bass frequencies, if you don't have some definition going on down there, it just turns into a wash. And that's sort of exactly what happens when I switch back to the Pro Tools committed version of this master. Check it. Well, clearly our engineered master just has way more clarity and definition in that low mid range. The results that we're hearing today are exactly why I go to the effort to engineer and record every single multi-track. You know, as a mix engineer, I can put up these engineered tracks and I'm not starting from below zero, if you know what I mean. I'm already starting at a certain point and moving forward in that mix. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session. And I hope that just by hearing the difference between these two masters, that it totally inspires you to stop using that commit function inside your DAW and to start considering and engineering each and every one of the sounds that makes up your multi-track. Because every time it's gonna result in a more killer sounding mix. Mm -hmm.